Greetings, brethren. This is man with biblical science. Today, the Holy Ghost put it in my heart, agitated my conscience to talk about this uh, pagan feast, Christmas. This I'm not talking about the to the unsafe people. I expect them to worship this because, as you know, the Roman Empire rules the world today. This is not United States of America. This is the 14th Amendment, Holy Roman American Empire. It's, this is primarily to the same people worshiping this Baal Christmas. I'm going to be talking about its origins, where it came from, but to talk about that, I need to talk about the origins of Catholicism. But before I even go to that, let me, let me talk about my experience of why I feel I'm, I'm apt and pretty well to talk about this uh, topic. I've been a Roman Catholic for about 18 years. I was an altar boy. I went to school, Roman Catholic school. I went to this St. Peter's School in Bowdoin Street. I'm from Boston, by the way. I saw one in the green. Uh, St. Saint, Saint, uh, Peter's School in Bowdoin Street and Don Bosco in Tremont, which is closed down for some reason. I wonder why. They're both Roman Catholic schools. I've been taught in all Roman Catholic doctrine. I was a devout Catholic. Let me make that point. Not a Catholic, Roman Catholic, atheist Catholic, all these passive Catholics that don't know what they stand for. I know what I stand for. That's a very good, that's a point I want to make clear. I was a devout. That means I know the doctrine. How many Roman Catholics, you know, you're Summa Theologica, St. Thomas Aquinas. There's no, it's no murder to kill a her heretic. How many people know that? I know that. Very few doctrine that, they say, I'm a Roman Catholic, I'm devout. They, you know that's no, that's what your doctrine says, it's no murder to kill a Heretic. Do you know about circular confession? Transubstantiation. That's the Eucharist, the cookie. So I felt that's why the Lord said, you're you're one of the best to talk about this. Are there people far better than me? Absolutely. But do I feel like, based on my experience of being a Roman Catholic for 18 years, going to Roman Catholic school for eight years, feel that I think I should weigh in on this uh, argument about whether to not to celebrate Christmas? Yeah, I think so. Let, let's start about, let's start about, now I told you about my origin, uh, my expertise being a Roman Catholic. Let's talk about Catholicism. Do you know Constantine, the real reason to create it? I mean, do you really know? I don't think you do, because if you did, you know it was full of political reasons, not religious. 535 AD, the Council of Nicaea, after persecuting Christians, throwing them to the lines, killing them, Constantine was like this. These Christians are very stubborn. I kill them over and over again. I burn them on the cross. That's where the Ku Klux Klan is from. The Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. The Roman Catholics burning the cross. The Romans used to burn uh, Christians on the cross every Sunday. Sunday's Baal worship. Burn the cross of them alive at the stake. This is where burning stake come from. Oh, you saying it's a sin to worship? No, I'm just saying this is what they used to do. We live in a pagan world. When you say f it's five hours, well, hours is Horus. It's just the words inverted, the letters inverted. Horus is a sky god. When when Indiana Jones, he's talking to his father, Indiana Jones 3, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, that's the sky god, Horus. 12 steps of Horus walking on the sky, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Well, guess what they used to call Horus also too? He later became the sun god. Isis, Horus said, is the, the devil's trinity. Isis is Mary. Horus is Jesus Christ. And Set, Sun Set. Set is the uh, God, Prince of Darkness. I don't know who that Set is. Well, it's the devil. Who else would it be? He's called the Prince of Darkness. Sun Set. And that's the Jesuit symbol, IHS. What, what, what do you think it's inside of? Well, a sun, of course. That symbol is a sun, sun rays around and IHS in the middle. So when you worship Christmas, you're worshiping Jesus Christ. Yeah, you are worshiping Jesus Christ. The sun god, Jesus Christ. Horus. But let's go back to uh, Constantine. I'm not going to do what many say Christians do, jump around from point to point. I'm going to tie it all in. It was polit for political reasons. He wanted to unite the pagans and Christians together. What better to do it with Catholicism? Okay? It's for political reasons. It, Catholicism is a religion of miscegenation. 
It's to unite people that would not get along. Pagans and Christians do not get along. They hate each other. Well, Christians don't hate pagans, but you know what I mean? They don't get along. Well, what better to unite them than Catholicism? Catholicism is mystery Babylon religion under the garb, under the veil of Christianity. Just like the Roman Catholic Church is a Roman Empire, really. It's a political, <laughs> has nothing to do with religion. But it does, but it's more political. The papal Caesar is the king. The College of Cardinals is the Roman Senate. You know what cardinal means? Something, I think it means like holding the key, key holders. Well, what's the Vatican flag? It's the two keys. Skull of, cross, skull of crossbones? That's where they get it from. One key is spiritual power, the other is temporal. The Pope, which means Papa, Father, he's the king, political. That's one key. And he's the spiritual king. T spiritual and temporal. The NSA is the uh, eagle over a key. So, yeah, the Roman Catholic Church is a political empire. I don't hear no one say about that, talk about that, except for Eric Phelps. He's dead on. It's a political empire. It's a geopolitical empire. Catholicism is religion. It's, it's a political institution, ideology, under the garb of religion. So, yeah, if what's the saying goes? If you can't beat them, join them. That's what Constantine did. Join them. He declared Christianity the, the religion of Rome. Okay? And he instituted the the Saturnalia religion. Saturn is Satan. It's represented by black, black robes. Oh, where, where do we see black robes? We see Darth Vader wore a black robe. Judges wear a black robe. Or oh, judges are priests of Baal. Don't the judges and priests look alike? All they're missing is that white little collar. Well, a judge is a priest of Baal. Saturn, Saturn worship, black robe. So Constantine stood at the Saturnalia feast. One of them is with this uh, this ancient pagan feast of uh, Tammuz worship. Back in the pagan uh, Babylonian times, Isis, which is Samaramis, Samaramis wanted her son to be immortalized through the ages. So she wanted to celebrate the son's birth. That's what Christian had his origin with. Uh, Christmas, I mean, it's been around long before Christ was even born. Long before Christianity, long before Catholicism. I told you Catholicism is Babylonian religion. You mean to tell me uh, God said, let me go ahead and uh, take this thing of the devil, slap my son on it, and make people worship Christianity? No, that's not something God would do, but that's something the devil would do. I mean, see, how do people worship, take that people to worship? I mean, I know. Let's take this ancient pagan Baal feast. Has nothing to do with Christ. But me, but me slap on Christ there to have saved people worship me. Devil loves nothing more than having saved people worship him. He loves it. He gets a high off of it. You need to know your enemy, the devil. Why not? Because he knows you intimately. intimately. There's nothing more the devil loves. He loves a lot of things, but I think this is one of them. Having saved people, worship him. He's saying to God, look, God, this is why you're the, I'm the most intelligent being you created. The only one above me is you, God, the Godhead. But other than that, there's no angel above me, no archangel above me. There's no other cherubim above me. Lucifer was number one in terms of intelligence of God's creation. What about Jesus Christ? God didn't create it. God is Jesus Christ. God did not create Jesus Satan, Lucifer, is the number one creation of God. He's the most intelligent being, but we constantly underestimate him. Well, how? Well, he has saved people worshiping Baal feast. This uh, this uh, Baal worship, uh, Saturnalia holiday. If you want to worship Christians, why don't you worship like the Romans used to? They used to fornicate, eat their kids, sacrifice them to the gods. Eat, drink, and be merry. Do you know what's the holiday where the most suicides are? Well, Christmas. Well, it's, a, it's all about love, family, getting together. Well, what if you have no family? Well, I have no family around this holiday. I want to kill myself. Well, the devil loves sacrifices. Sure, it's not a baby. It's not abortion. Well, it'll do. Look that up. Christmas. What's the number one American holiday where people commit suicide? Christmas. Of course. Winter solstice, December 25th, 
when the sun, S-U-N, rises up. Not the S-O-N, the S-U-N. Jesuits, Catholic, Catholics are sun worshippers. The Eucharist is the sun. Transubstantiation. Transubstantiation. Killing Jesus Christ over and over again. They're eating the literal blood. They're cannibalism. Sorcery. So, yeah, the devil loves nothing more than save people worshiping him. He loves it. Do you know when uh, they passed the Federal Reserve Act in 1913? You know why it passed through Congress and they didn't even bother looking at it? Well, if you, people don't know, the Federal Reserve Act is the reason why we have the IRS. The IRS was in before, wasn't around before 1913. This fake fiat, fiat money that we had wasn't around before 1913. You know why they didn't really read the bill and just let it pass? Well, they were, they were home, too busy home, worshiping Baal. That bill passed on December 25th. God's like, okay, you want to worship Baal on December 25th? I'm going to go ahead and pass this. Let this, this is 1913. A Federal Reserve Act pass, which people say was the pact of the devil. Oh, that's just a coincidence. Yeah, sure it is. The Bible says it's no coincidence. I purposed it. Isaiah. So yeah, what a coincidence that uh oh, it's Jesus Christ is worship. Well, yeah, that's why God let that bill pass on that day, December twenty fifth. I don't think I don't know if it was December twenty fifth, but it was around it was Christmas time because Congress went home. They didn't bother reading the bill, uh, let it pass. They're too busy home worshiping Baal. So, go ahead and worship your Satan clause. It's not Santa Claus, it's Satan clause. The word is inverted. Like hours. It's not hours, it's horses. What, what time is it right now? Well, it's 10 horses and 33 minutes. So it's 10, 33 minutes come from min, moon, mercury. Yeah, don't. Don't preach to me how this is a pagan world. I know you're preaching to Christ. I know this is a pagan world. Months are pagan gods. Time is pagan. Everything's pagan. But that doesn't mean I have to worship these pagan holidays. I'm supposed to be living in the world, not be of it. If you're saved, you're worshiping Christmas, you're of the world. You don't live in it. You don't just live in it. So, yeah, Congress let that bill pass in 1913 during Christmas time. Well, God said, you want to worship Baal? I'm going to pass this 1913 act and let this IRS come in. Let this fake money come in. You know, back in the day, how much it costs to go watch a movie? 25 cents. How much does it cost to watch a movie now? If it's IMAX, it's 20. Inflation. It's fake money. Back then, everybody paid off their house, car, everything. You can look that up. That's a historical fact. Remember, the Bible does not just tell you to love the truth. You're supposed to obey it. So, you better hope I'm wrong. Because if I'm right, the, God is ordering you to do your homework, so to speak. So, yeah, Santa. let's talk about Santa Claus. So, St. Nicholas, this was a Roman Catholic bishop. You write to him, you're writing to the dead, which is necromancy, which the Bible forbids. Okay? Well, let's talk about the tree. Well, what is the tree? Well, what is, it, what is the tree? It's idolatry. What else could it be? You're worshiping two things. Worshiping the fall of man. How do you decorate a tree? Well, with the wreath, whatever, the, the long thing that looks like a snake around the tree. That's the serpent. The little ornaments round, most some of them are red. Well, that's the apple. You're worshiping the fall of man. Christmas Eve. Eve, Adam and Eve. Do I need to keep going? She's the one that took the apple. She's the one that bit from it first, Christmas Eve. That's what you're worshiping. But you're also worshiping the Antichrist. I'm talking to saved people. You're worshiping the Antichrist. Put it to scripture. Okay, let's go and do it. Back in the day, you don't buy a, you, you, you bought a Christmas tree, a real one, not these fake plastic ones. They used to cut it down. Well, let's go to the process. They cut the Christmas tree down. It's dead. It dies. You, you arrain it in you know, and purple, and scarlet, and pretty decorations. And then you put the the five-pointed star on the top. You know where I'm going with this? Let's say, what does the Bible say about the Antichrist? He is slain, sword wound, chopped down, dead. Or if you know anything about popes, well, every pope is an Antichrist. The, the, the Bible doesn't just talk about the Antichrist. It talks about many Antichrists. The Pope, the Roman Catholic dynasty of popes is Antichrist dynasty. Every Pope is an Antichrist. They call him the Vicar of Christ. 
Christ, res Christ in the flesh. That's what Pope Bergoglio calls himself. So anyway, when a pope dies, you know how they decorate him? Well, funny, he looks like kind of like a Christian tree because he's purple. He has the 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 P with the X. It's on his uh, uniform. Xmas. Well, that's a Roman Catholic symbol. That's on his uniform, and he's all decorated out. Well, that's how the Antichrist is going to be. And when he's risen, he's no longer possessed by the devil. He is the devil, re in, in devil incarnate, just like Christ is God incarnate. The five-pointed star, the five-pentagram symbol, it's on top of Christian tree. Well, that's signifying that he's the devil now. The devil is an angel of light. Behold, I, Lucifer is a transformed into an angel of light. So you're worshiping, whether you want to believe it or not. Well, I told the Lord to convict me. I said I'll sleep on it. Well, still haven't changed. I'm so stubborn in my ways. Sorry if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'm strong about this. You are insulting my Savior. You are worshiping Antichrist and you're worshiping the fall of man. Remember, I was a Roman Catholic for about 10 years, 8 to 18. I've been to Roman Catholic school. I went to Roman Catholic Mass. You're supposed to. It's part of your curriculum. There's no... When you go to Catholic school, these are the people going to Catholic school. You can't say, I'm a Christian. I can't go to... You have to go. Back then, I, well, you, we didn't have to go. But back then, I was... Yes, sir. It's, Roman Catholicism is militarized. It's all military. Jesuits are a military order. I felt like I had to go. Let's put it that way. So I went to Catholic Mass. I went to confession. I was an altar boy. That's why I feel like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I think I do know what I'm talking about. So, you ever wonder why uh, people always think God loves them? God loves lost sinners. I'm talking to lost people. God loves lost sinners. Oh, God's God of love. See, Santa Christ holidays. What's, what's the holiday about love? Valentine's Day. Oh, what is Valentine's Day? Well, worshiping the Roman god Cupid. You know who Cupid really is? Well, Nimrod, the hunter. Apollo also is the hunter, Cupid Arrow. It's pit, but mystery Babylon religion. But God loves you. It's all these holidays. No, God loves me. I know I'm a good person. I don't need Jesus Christ. And don't hand me that people are aware of what Christmas is. Jesus, bull crap. It's about materialism, it's about gifts. Back when I was in St. Peter's school, people I knew it was a pagan holiday. Why? Because people told me. Oh, this is not really Jesus Christ. They told me when I was a kid. I didn't care. I wanted my gifts. No cares. Don't tell me if you, this is a time of family gathering together and all that nonsense. No, it's materialism, which is a religion. It's all about money. Okay? This is what this pagan holiday is all about. Okay? It's about astrology. The sun, S-U-N, winter solstice, it rises up on December 25th. Okay? It's, it's all astrology. It's all mystery ba Babylon religion. Okay? You can worship if you want. Save people and save people. It's a pagan religion. Tree signifies the Antichrist and the fall of man. You ever wonder why there's three sixes? I, don't, I already know why six is chosen. It's, it's the day man created. But why three? Well... This is this debate, what is the Antichrist system, man? Well, I think it's three things. Because remember, the devil likes to be counterfeit in Christ. You have your holy tr trinity. Well, I don't like using that. That trinity is a Roman word. You like you have the Godhead. Well, I got my Godhead. Isis, Horus, Set. My Antichrist, it's a three in itself. There's three things associated with Antichrist. First of all, if you're unsaved, you have the spirit, the Antichrist in you, which is the devil. Ye father is the devil, and the lust of the father ye will do. You have the spirit of Antichrist in you if you aren't saved. That's the that's the first six. The second is well, it's this system, of course. It's a system. These are uh, holidays: Valentine's Day, Easter. Oh, you worship Christmas. You gotta worship Easter because they're the same thing. Let's talk about Easter. Astarte, fertility god, the bunny, the Playboy bunny. That's what you're worshiping. Or oh, is Jesus Christ? Sure, it is. It's a Roman god, Jesus Christ, Horus. That Jesus Christ with the long hair, with the heart, which is from the Aztec religion. The Quisitor, the snake god. Yeah, you're worshiping that Jesus Christ. So everybody that worship Christmas, might as well buy that painting. Buy that painting of Jesus Christ. This is not idolatry. This is useful good. Sure. 
Watch how many demons fly into that picture. That's the Jesus Christ you're worshiping. I'm pointing like this because I used to have it on my wall. Take that off. I have no, nothing hanged on my wall. No crosses, which the cross is just a Babylonian pagan symbol. I still have saved people even having that. And they willing to debate me. The, the book of Acts, thou shalt not make no art of the Godhead. That's in Acts. I'm not going to go ahead and spoon feed you and tell you the, the verses thing because I know it's there. Be a Berean. Sift through the scriptures yourself. Babylon, Babylonian uh, symbol, cross was around long before Jesus Christ. Long before. That's the way the Romans used to uh, persecute and, and show people not to mess with them. Okay? They used to put that cross and put whoever they persecuted, killed right in front of their uh, town or squares as a warning. Okay? Uh, but Jesus Christ, uh, let's make that a Christian symbol. Yeah, go ahead. Okay? Were the thieves next to them Christians? They got crucified on the cross too. One was saved, wasn't, one wasn't. I saw a movie with uh, Van Damme, Cyborg. They crucified him on the cross. Well, he must be a Christian too. Got crucified on the cross. But they didn't nail him. They tied him. Watch the movie Cyborg. Oh, Christians should not watch movies. This is why I think you should watch movies. Because the devil likes to brag. Yeah, they crucified, uh, it was Jean-Claude Van Damme, the movie Cyborg. He was on a cross like this. Well, he must be a Christian too. Surrogates with Bruce Willis. Knight of Malta, Jesuit Knight of Malta, Bruce Willis. They, uh, he was a his surrogate. He, he, they crucified him on a cross like this. Why? As a symbol that we're against uh, surrogates. We're against robots. People using robots to think of them themselves. I can go into surrogates all day long. I'm not going into that movie. But my point is, crucifixion is a warning. Okay? Here's another thing with uh, Christmas. Stockings. Do you know in the Papal Inquisition, what they used to hang on their walls? When they used to torture Christians for reading the Bible? Stockings. What else? And crosses. How do I know? Watch the YouTube video, Rome Rules the, Rome rules the World Today. Something like that. And the guy has the book, and he has it on camera. But what? Wait, uh, I was looking at this book. It, those, those look like stockings in the background. There. Well, they are stockings. That's what stockings come from in Christmas. You celebrating? So you're saying you're celebrating the Papal Inquisition? Absolutely, because they had crosses everywhere hanging around. Why? Because Christ is dead on the cross. That's 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 the that's our that's the he's the first guy that we inquisited inquis, inquisition. Okay, he's he's the guy that we killed. We're proud of it. That's why the Pope has it on his own. The Pope is nothing but a Babylonian high priest. He has the mitre, the fish god Dagon, which is the Jesus fish. Sure, a lot of say Christians have that Jesus with the fish there. No, that's that's coming from Dagon. If you get his hat, the Pope's hat, you put it on sideways, it looks like a fish. Freya Friday, fish. They used to eat fish and fornicate on Friday. Oh, now you saying don't worship on the Lord on Friday? No, I'm just telling you where it came from. You ever wonder why Friday comes from? It comes from Freya. The Babylonian god Dagon. They used to fornicate and eat fish on that day. <clears throat> Saturnalia holiday, December 25th. Romans used to fornicate, eat, drink, and be merry, and kill their kids. Sacrifice their children. There's no holiday on, on the planet that I can think of that people kill themselves more on Christmas. Why? Because it's all about family. Well, what if I'm a homeless person? I have no family. Well, I want to kill myself. That was like, go ahead. I love sacrifices. Had enough. I can't have enough of abortion. I love that sacrifice. Kids, babies, killing. Child sacrifice is a tenet of Roman Catholicism. That's why Catholics are for abortion. Okay? They're for abortion. They're for gun grabbing. That's a tenet of Rome. When Jesus Christ says, "Who he should have, don't has a have a sword, sell his garment and buy one. Jesus Christ was pro-gun. Roman swords was illegal back then. Crossbows were illegal back then because they penetrated the knight's armor. Knight is a servant of Rome. Rome, they banned Roman crossbows. So, don't tell me I don't know my Catholicism. I, they thought I was so good at it, getting A straight A's in religion and, and Catholics too. They're like, why don't you become a priest, Roman Catholic priest? Hey, I could have. I can. I can be a Roman Catholic priest right now. Why? I know their doctrine. I got the head knowledge. Oh, you're not saved. You're a Roman Catholic. No, no. I didn't let that head knowledge go to my heart. Though. That's the difference.
Everybody has head knowledge. Do you let it go to your heart? Well, if you're saved, you better let Jesus Christ go to you have your heart. Remember, the devil's a copycat. That's why you got the picture of Jesus Christ with the heart, with the crown of thorns. No, that's not that Jesus Christ of the Bible. That's the Roman God, Jesus Christ. Back in the days, with if you saw this movie Apocalypto, what they used to do? Well, they love human sacrifice. They used to kill the guy, eat his heart. Why? Well, the cannibalists. Well, well, that's what Roman Catholics are with transubstantiation. Yeah, they cannibals too. They think that cookie is really Jesus Christ's flesh. Well, the same thing with Epstein. They take out the heart, eat it. Well, don't you have a picture of Jesus Christ with the long hair, goatee, blue eyes, with the heart? Well, that's some Jesus Christ you're celebrating. Well, remember, the devil wants you to know who you're celebrating. You're celebrating the Roman god Horus, which was the sky god. Luke Skywalker, Star Wars, The Force Awakens. But he's also the sun god. Isis Horus Set. S S U N. So, I mean, what else? Einstein said, if you don't understand something, you can't explain it to a kid, you don't understand it. 26 minutes in this video, I think I said my piece about these pagan holidays. What else more do I need to say? Christmas is an Antichrist, fall of man, Baal worship holiday. Let's talk about holidays then. So I come on another well, but all, all holidays are bad now. No. Don't take the exception and make it the rule. Okay? The devil likes to do this. He's against one ho he's against ho that Christmas holiday. So he must be against all of them. No. What holidays are you for? Well, the one the Bibles talk about. Passover. Unleavened bread. I don't have to do it. I'm not against people that do it. Of course I'm for holy days. Holidays. But the ones that Bible says it. Tell me where the Bible says you gotta celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Give me scripture. I'm not, I gave scripture not to worship the tradition of the men and to be not far in the rudiments of the world and obey God rather than man and thou shalt not sin with the multitude. This scripture right there. And thou shalt obey all truth. All means secular and non secular. The Holy Ghost guides you to all truth. Everybody talks about the gospel, gospel this, gospel that. Can you tell me where is the gospel in the Bible? I don't hear a lot of people talking about this, but one, Eric Phelps. It's not in Romans. Gospel is not in Romans. People say you should memorize some scripture. Absolutely. This is the number one scripture you should memorize. Why? Because this ties into what I'm talking about, Christmas. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4, when Paul says, Believe while which I, I preach, have it in memory. Oh, don't you think this is important? This is the only scripture I can think of where he, Paul says, you should memorize this. Unless it's in vain. That Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. He was dead. Buried. According to scriptures. Rose again on the third day so that our sins can be forgiven. What does it talk about? Celebrate his birth. That Christ, Christ was born on December 25th. Which, no. Death, burial, resurrection. That's the gospel. That's the literal gospel. Remember, the God is not the author of confusion. Why? Because the Bible says he's not the author of confusion. The devil is. That's the gospel. So don't tell me I have to worship Christmas. And don't tell me not to rebuke you for worshiping Christmas. Where is it in Scripture? Easter, you know, Easter, the word Easter is in Scripture? Well, of course it is. It's a Roman, it's a Roman Catholic holiday. It's a star day. It's the fertility God. It has nothing to do with the Christ of the Bible, King James Bible, that is. It's a Roman God. When you say you worship Jesus Christ, which Jesus Christ are you talking about? There's a lot of them out there. Are you, well, Mormons worship Jesus Christ too. You're talking about him? The Quran is Jesus Christ too. You're talking about him? Roman Catholics got a Jesus Christ. Which Jesus Christ are you talking about? Remember, the devil's an author of confusion. There's a lot of Jesus Christ's out there. Are you talking about the Christ consciousness for you New Agers? Okay? Don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I can be, go out there and be a Catholic priest right now. I got the head knowledge. I know their doctrine. Circular confession. Well, do you know when the Catholics used to confess their sins? April 15th. Hey, that's when we do our taxes. You know taxes has nothing to do with about how much money. They know how much money you have. It's about confessing your sins. They want to know everything about you. April 15th is confession. Oh, no, you say no, do, do, do your tax. No, I'm just... 
See why they chose April 15th? Well, you know April 15th is when the Titanic, the, the Titanic sunk? Where the Jesuits sunk their Titanic because the there was Jews there that was against the Federal Reserve Act. Can't have those Jews being opposed. Sink that ship. It was on April 15th. April 15th, where we confess our sins. Confession. Catholic confession. Who ruled the world when Jesus was around? Rome. We have no king but Caesar. A Jew said that. Same thing as today. Rome rules the world. It's not United States of America. Let's talk about July 4th. Oh, he's against July 4th. No. I just don't celebrate it. I'm not against it. Well, why? You're celebrating the America that no longer exists. Civil War. Uh, you know what that was about? Centralizing power. It was making all the states provinces and making Washington, D.C., the Rome on the Potomac. That's what they call it, not I, not me. That's why the capital looks like the Vatican, because it is. It's called Rome on the Potomac. That's all the Civil War did. It centralized power. And the 14th Amendment was ratified, and there's no longer the America you know. It's called, here's what America's called. It's probably in the, the law book. It's called the 14th Amendment, Holy Roman American Empire. That's why when they pledge allegiance to the flag, which is a military salute, I don't hear it. When I'm watching a football game, I change the channel. I'm not saluting to Rome. Go ahead. Pledge allegiance to the flag. God bless America. Go ahead. There's no America. It doesn't exist. Just the United States Corporation and the Holy Roman American Empire. The 14th Amendment, Holy Roman American Empire. Okay? That's why I don't celebrate July 4th. Celebrate July 28th because that's when it was born. July 28th, 1868 is when the Holy Roman American Empire was born. So celebrate happy 4th of July 28th. I'm not celebrating 4th of July. You can go ahead and remind you of it, but I'm not celebrating because it doesn't exist no more. Okay? I'm not against all holidays. I'm against certain ones. Christmas and Easter. Why? Because they're using my Lord's name in vain. You know, you're breaking... There's, there's sins that get God angry, but there's sins that infuriate and enrage him. Idolatry is number one. And using his name in vain is another one. No. Idolatry, Christmas tree, stockings, candy cane, mistletoes, which is fertility gods all over again. Oh, you're not using his name in vain. Yes, you are. Christmas. You're using Jesus Christ, his name in vain. Well, you said it's a Roman God, Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. But don't celebrate it. Okay? I just told you the gospel has nothing to do with celebrating his birth, death, burial, resurrection. Oh, people say he might have been born in December. Well, good. But don't celebrate, don't celebrate December 25th. Celebrate his birth on you think he might have been born on December 1st? Yeah, the Bible says you can celebrate God however you want. Your Sabbath day can be Wednesday, Thursday, if you're a Gentile, and whatever whatever you want. Your Sabbath day can be Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursdays, whenever you want. You can celebrate him. Don't celebrate him like the world does. That's all I'm saying. You want to celebrate his birth? Fine. Choose December 1st. Although there's people saying, I can't guarantee it, but there's people saying he's born more born in spring and summertime, not, not the wintertime. That's what they're saying. So, I don't know. But don't you think if God wants you to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, he would put it in the Bible and make it absolutely clear? I'm just saying. He wants you to You'd be saved by knowing the gospel, death, burial, resurrection, not his birth. Well, don't forget, he's God. God cannot be born, he can't be dead. So let's go about birthdays. Birthdays are a little bit more lenient, but not that lenient because you're celebrating your flesh. Remember, you're a soul. You can't be born or die. You're celebrating the birth of your sinful flesh. Okay? It's nothing but self-worship. Then you're against people celebrate. No. Be careful though. Remember when I, when I used to have a birthday, invite everybody. I love the I love the attention. Buy me gifts. It's self worship, idolatry. I don't celebrate my birthday. You know what I celebrate? The day I was saved, February eighth, twenty fifteen. I celebrate the day I was reborn. Or you just said a spirit can't age. Well, you can count the years that you've been saved. See how far you've gone. You want to celebrate your birthday? Celebrate uh, the day you were saved. Mine was February 20, 2015. You, you don't remember the day you were saved? Hmm. 
I remember that day like it was yesterday. It's around 3 p.m. Lord pricked my heart. Repentance, godly sorrow, and he gave me the faith to believe. February 8th, 2015 was the day I was saved. Mark it on your calendar. That's what Ken Hovind says. Mark the date that you, that you get saved because the devil is going to keep saying, you're not saved. You think you're saved? That was one of his biggest lies. So you got to have the helmet of salvation. So with well, birthdays, go ahead and uh, worship yourself. I'm not for a birthday. I really am. I'm not. Celebrate the day you're saved, not not your flesh day. Remember your soul. You're not a body. I'm 35 years old. I don't need a birthday to celebrate. What, what are you doing when your birthday is? Well, I thank God I'm still alive. How's that? Thank you, God, for I'm 40 years old. I'm 35 years old. I'm gonna be my birthday's gonna be on March 8th. Uh, praise God, Father, that I'm able to see 36. May God to eat. That's it. If you do that, that's fine. But don't tell me that's how everybody celebrate their birthday. They have these big birthday parties. Oh, it's his birthday. Let's invite all these. Don't tell me you don't go overboard. Do not tell me. Let's talk about the Jesuit New Year. You know what? A lot of saved people will celebrate New Year if they just slap Jesus Christ on it. That's why if I was the devil, I would do. I'm Satan, figuratively speaking. Let me see. How do I get people to celebrate New Year? Let's slap Jesus Christ on it because everybody follows Jesus Christ. Je Je this is Jesuit New Year. Do you know uh, New Year was was celebrated on springtime? You know why the Jesuits moved it to January with a Gregorian calendar, which is named after S Saint Gregory. You're under the Gregorian calendar. You know why they changed it from March to January? Well, March is what season? Spring. That's where life begins, blooms. Well, January is the opposite of that. Well, of course, those who love me hate death. January is where everything's dead. Take a look outside January, wherever you are. If you're in Boston, where I'm from, well, the leaves are dead. The season's dead. It's winter. Everything's cold. I remember uh, the movie Van Helsing, Dracula. You know where he lived? His lair? It was an ice palace. Dracula means son of the dragon, son of the devil. Go ahead and watch those, those people that worship New Year. Dionysus, go ahead. Worship New Year. Well, I'm saved. I'm not worshiping right now. Of course you're not worshiping it because there's no Jesus Christ in it. There was Jesus Christ in New Year associated. You will be worshiping it. I'm talking to saved people. Wherever there's Jesus Christ, you're going to worship it. Easter, got to worship it. No, it's the Roman God, Jesus Christ. Which Jesus Christ are you talking about? It's Horus, the sun god. Isis, Horus, set. So yeah, New Year. I'm not. I don't work. Here's the well, what holidays do you worship? Well, we gotta gotta be wary of the words you say. Worship is putting God above you. He must increase. I must decrease. Celebrate is putting you equal footing with him. Do you worship God on Christmas? Do we worship Christmas or do we celebrate Christmas? We celebrate it. So what are you saying? Let's just say uh, Christmas is Jesus Christ, the uh, King James Bible. Well, why does people say we celebrate Jesus Christ's birth? Are you saying you're on equal footing? Because that's what celebrate means. I celebrate my birthday. That doesn't mean I'm God above everybody else. It just means I'm on equal footing with everybody. But this is a day. This is my day. I celebrate Christmas. So what you're saying? You're saying you're putting God equal to yourself? Are you a human? You is a druidic God. You God man. God man. Are you a human? The only God, the only human is Jesus Christ. You means God, man. Humanism is a religion of God becoming man, alchemy. So, take this, I mean, eat the meat, spit out the bones. I know I have some bones here, but uh, don't tell me I don't have good meat that you can learn from, that you can be edified from. I'm talking to believers. So, what, what holidays do you celebrate? And I'm going to say worship, celebrate. Well, October 31st. Oh, he's a Satanist. He's worshiping Halloween, but... You know that Halloween itself is druidic, it's Celtic, absolutely, and it's Saturnalia, just like Christmas. But do you know the date is another thing all in itself? October 31st is Protestant Reformation Day. It's the day that the, the Catholic Church, uh, Martin Luther stamped that 99 Theses in the Catholic Church and said, 
We're not going to have none of this. And the Protestant Reformation era was born. Birth of conscience. You like all these inventions? Well, they all came out of the Protestant Reformation, the freedom of conscience. October 31st is that day. That was like, we can't have them celebrate this day. So let's take this October 31st. Remember, the devil is the, the great corrupter. Let's take this day that Christians should celebrate. And let's sat satanize it. And let's make it Halloween. Where it's worshiping the dead. What dead? Well, the people outside the Catholic Church. That's where Halloween comes from. You're worshiping the Protestants that are in hell right now. You're worshiping the dead, which is necromancy. They used to go out, ask for beer and cake. Now it's candy. But that's what they used to do in, in old England days. So you worship Halloween? No, I don't worship Halloween or celebrate Halloween. I acknowledge October 31st is Protestant Reformation, Protestant Reformation Day. Well, that sounds like you celebrate a holiday. Well, I do. Did I say I celebrate some holidays? That's the first holiday I celebrate. October 31st. Protestant Reformation Day, not Halloween. The devil took... I didn't even know that, by the way. Oh, it's Halloween. That's, everybody knows that's Satan. Say, oh, yeah, it is. But do you know the day is special? How do you know that if the devil takes that day and corrupts it? So that's one. S number two, Thanksgiving. Why? Because it's thanks the word Thanksgiving is all throughout the Bible. Give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord. There's people that Satanize that. Oh, it's a uh, person killing the Indians, blah, blah. No, I think that's a biblical holiday. I think that's a holiday God wants you to celebrate. Celebrate, not worship. So, Thanksgiving and Protestant Reformation Day and July 4th, maybe. But I don't, because like I said, that, that America no longer exists. You're, you're living in the 14th Amendment, Holy Roman American Empire, July 28th, 1868. So you want to worship July 4th? Worship the July the 28th. That's the America you're living in. And that means you live on the Roman law, you follow the Roman holidays, which is Christmas and Easter. You follow their holidays. Okay? It's Jesus Christ. Sure it is. Sure it is. It's the Roman God, Jesus Christ. Constantine had a dream of a cross. Okay, this is a symbol of my religion, the cross. So, you want to know why he chose the cross? That's why. Well, he was a pagan, he was a sun worshiper. A lot of people say he was a Christian. Sure, Constantine was a Christian, yeah. He's a bloody murderer. He's a pagan Babylonian high priest. That's what all these priests, these uh, popes are. They got the Babylonian cross on their uniform. The P with the X on the uniform. The mitre, the Dagon fish card. The scepter. The Pope is nothing but more than a Babylonian high priest. So all you, you know all the people that worship Christmas? Well, you know the, the Vatican worship it too. There's a picture of Pope Benedict dressed up like Santa Claus. Well, of course. He's an antichrist. He's Satan Claus. Well, of course. Look, look up Pope Benedict dressed up like Santa Claus. He got the little, you know, the hat. You know how Santa Claus, St. Claus is dressed like? Well, that's how the Pope dresses like. Go ahead and worship Christmas. Go ahead. And like I said, I didn't want to do this video, but the, the Holy Ghost agitated me, saying, you're on something. These Christians are using my son's name in vain. He saved people. All these pagan holidays. Use some discernment. I'm talking to the Holy Ghost in you, not you. Let the Holy Ghost convict you and guide you to all truth. All means biblical and secular. That's how I point some history here. So, 43 in minutes into the video, checking my battery here, make sure the devil doesn't cut me off and kill this video like last time. So let me put some battery power. Hold on. <clears throat> let me let me charge this. I'm just thinking, well, how else more can I... I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just trying to guide you to the truth. You make up your own mind. Okay? These holidays is preparing for the Antichrist. Is the Antichrist a man? Yeah. Well, don't tell me it's not a system. It's also a system. It's both. All these prosperity preachers, God's all about love. He loves you even though you're a sinner, even though the Bible calls you a child of wrath if you're unsaved. But God wants you to be rich. Well, of course, He wants you to be rich. The Roman God, Jesus, Horace. So you can accept the mark. These prosperity preachers will be first in line to accept the mark. All these Antichrist holidays, Christmas, Easter, to make you worship the beast. You know they're already talking about enforced Sunday worship? Making a law, you have to go to church? 
That's coming. So when it's the 70th week of Daniel, I'm talking to you unsaved Christians. I hope you, you love Christmas and you're not going to change your mind because they're going to force you to worship Baal Mass. Christ Mass, the celebration of death. This is where the Mass is. It's celebrating his death. That's what the Eucharist is all about. People say Mass is a feast. Well, it could be, but the devil likes to take a word and put a lot of meaning to it. Mass is also a celebration of death. You drop that one S, Christmas, Christ Mass. Well, where, where did the X come from? Well, X, uh, in terms of the Greek language, is CH. The P represent the R, CHR, Mass. Christ Mass. Celebration of death, Mass. Well, we're going to the funeral, Mass. Of who? The Pope, he died. So let's decorate them like we do to a Christmas tree. Look up Pope John Paul II. Look at look his funeral. How he's, he looks like a Christmas tree, of course. All precious stones and everything. Who's worshiping his death? Well, the leaders of the world. You know, Catholic means universal. Universal Studios. We go to universities. That's what Catholic means. Well, of course, everybody's worshiping the funeral mass, the celebration of the Pope's death. Because he's now risen. And now he's the, the devil incarnate. A mass is a celebration of death. Celebration of God's death. Not, not resurrection, which is what the gospel is. The gospel is a celebration of this worship of his death, burial, resurrection. The cross, with him dead on the cross, is just celebrating his death. Those who hate me love death. That's why the Pope has skull and bones everywhere. The skull and cross bones. The, the skull and bones is a... Nothing more than a Jesuit concoction. Skull and crossbone. Those who hate me love death. The pirates have the skull and crossbone. Where did that come from? With the Pope's flag, of course. Spiritual and temporal power. The NSA is the key. The carnal means the key holders. That's what carnal means. The Roman Catholic Church is, yeah, it's a religious, but it's a political empire. That's why the Pope is against these wars, but secretly... He's causing them. And right now he's causing World War III. The Pope is a spiritual leader, but he's also the king of the world. Really is the black Pope. The Pope his the Pope is nothing but President Obama in terms of the Catholic Church. The black Pope is a shock caller. Adolfo Nicholas, named after Adolf Hitler. Another Jesuit. He's the king. The black Pope is a king. The spiritual Pope. The, the white Pope, Bergoglio, he's the puppet. The Cardinals is the Roman Senate. The Roman Catholic Church is the Roman Empire. Under the garb, the veil of Catholicism. Catholicism is a geopolitical ideology. Like communism. Socialism. Fascism. Which is all Roman. The father of Rome, communism is not, now I'm just babbling, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about Christians, but I'm just demonstrating how I know what I'm talking about. Communism has nothing to do with, what's that Jew's name, Karl Marx, which was tutored by Peter Bex, a Gentile. Every Jew, there's a white man behind him, which I don't believe Einstein is who he said he is. I think he was a Jesuit coadjutor. He's a Jew. There's a white man behind him, giving them all the knowledge they stole from all the people that created uh, theory, theory of relativity. I don't think theory, theory of relativity was even Einstein. I think he's a Jesuit quadrant. Every Jew, there's a white man behind him. Karl Marx, well, Peter Beck's tutor him. He's a Roman Catholic priest. Karl Marx is not the father of communism. He's Sir Thomas More. Red Mass, red, white, and blue, those are all masses. You got the white mass, celebrating the hospitalers. That's where we get the name hospitals from. The blue mass, Police, enforcement. We got the red mass, communism. Red, white, and blue. For to celebrate Tom, Sir Thomas murder or more. What did he do? Well, he killed people for reading the Bible and burned them. So you got to celebrate him. He's the father of communism. No one talks about Sir Thomas more. A white Gentile. Jews don't rule the world. But they are, those who say they are Jews or they're not, but they're the synagogue of Satan. Don't tell me they're not corrupt Jews though. The Pharisees were the corrupt Jews back in the day, led by the Roman Empire. Well, same thing today. You got the Roman Catholic Church, the Roman Empire. Who's the Pharisees? Well, the Jewish government, of course. Kissinger, Jew. All these Jews, Ben Bernanke, Jews, Jews, but their masses are the Pope. 
So build up this anti-Jewish fear. He saw the Jews, the Jews. So you can go kill them. Open up these FEMA camps we got for them. The time of Jacob's trouble is all about the Jews. The last three and a half years. It's going to make the Holocaust look like a walk in the park compared to what's going to happen. So how does it ties into Christmas? Well, it ties into Antichrist. Everything's Antichrist. Antichrist, Antichrist. Christmas is an Antichrist holiday. The tree is cut down. It's dead. It's decorated. Just like they decorate a pope when he's dead. And then it's stand on his little stand, whatever, and put the little star on the top of the Christmas tree. That's signifying the devil. It's also the fall of man. Put those wreaths, whatever, that long decoration. That's a snake and the little ornament. The bowls, red. It can be green, blue, but some of them are red. Well, that's the Apple. Apple computers. Apple and the Apple computers, the Apple that Eve bit from. Don't tell me this is not a pagan world, but that doesn't mean I have to follow the, the ways of the heathen. I know it's a pagan world. Hours, minutes, times, minutes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, January, February, month. It's all Roman gods, Mercury, Venus, Mars. Don't tell me. I already know. All of it is Rome, which is all Babylon. It ends with Rome, but it begins with Babylon. You're, you're in modern Babylon, America. That's why I call it America. America's bought modern Babylon. Okay, that's his nickname. It's not really Babylon. Real Babylon is what the Pope is going to rebuild in Dubai. That's really Babylon. That's why he wants you to... Uh, that's why we're not going to have no solar power or hydrogen cars. The Pope wants you to use oil so he can build up his Sunni Caliphate in Dubai. That's, that's, that's Babylon. Okay? The Pope runs the oil field. Why? He wants you to build up Babylon. We live in 2016, but we really live in the Stone Age. You know, they're 50 to 100 years ahead of us in technology. I know I'm rambling. I'm talking about Christmas, but this is all ties into Christmas, though, because Christmas is all Roman. It's all Babylonian. It's all Antichrist. So I am not... Those who really know what I'm talking about, I ain't fitting Christmas into this. Okay? Christmas is a Saturnalia holiday, much like Halloween is. But it's the Druidic side. You know what they call the Jesuits? Or the modern Druids, of course. They're the guys with the, the hoods. Like hoodies. That's all Jesuit. I got hoodies right here. I got a Timberland jersey. Of course, that's all the Druids. Like I said, you don't think the devil's not going to make you dress like he dresses? You like hoods? You like hoodies? Well, that's that's calls for Druids. They're the ones in the black robes, the black hoods. Darth Vader, black. Well, he's a Jesuit. You got the men in black. Tommy Lee Jones. Well, they're Jesuits. Black, black. The judge wears a black robe. Well, he's a Jesuit priest. Of what? Baal. What is Christ meant? Well, Baal worship, of course. That's why God was infuriated. Congress celebrated that. That's why he said, go ahead, pass that act. Go home and celebrate your thing. While you're here, I'm going to let the Jesuits pass their 1913 Federal Reserve Act and shove uh, the IRS down your throats and this fake money down your throats. Because they received not the love of the truth. They did not obey the truth. So, God convict me if Christmas is not what it is, but it's Babylonian. I'm getting a tingling sensation now, and that's the whole... God is a consuming fire. You ever talk, talk about certain truth, and you just feel the tingling sensation around you? Oh, that's the devil. Really? No, I think that's God. God is a consuming fire. Right now, my legs are tingling. I think I'm telling the truth here. Call me nuts. It's crazy. I think I'm telling the truth. So, let's just wrap around with this. All these... uh pagan holidays. Well, what holidays should you celebrate? Well, how about the holidays in the Bible? Well, it talks about Easter. Well, if it does, it's talking about the leg of the night. Don't worship Easter. That's a pagan Roman holiday. Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Uh, ta Feast of the Tabernacle. Passover. Because why? Because Jesus Christ said, do this in remembrance of me. Not my birth. Do this in remembrance of me. Do what the sacrifice I'm about to do for you in remembrance of me. That's what Passover is about. Yeah, those are fine. Birthday, eh, go ahead, but worshiping your flesh, self worship. Thanksgiving, absolutely, go ahead. Thanksgiving, July 4th, go ahead, but that America no longer exists. But you can do it in reminding yourself of the America once was, but that America is dead, it's not coming back. Things get worse, not better. The law of entropy. And uh, 31st, well, that's Halloween. No, it's also Reformation Day. It's both. Which one do you celebrate?
Do you even know that Reformation Day was October 31st? Well, no, of course not. You worship the Druids. Okay? Let's talk about the Ku Klux Klan. Why? Well, they worship Christmas too. That's why. And it's not the Ku Klux Klan. It's the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. A knight is a servant of Rome. Klansmen and Catholic priests dress the same. Well, what a coincidence. Well, because they're the same thing. They dress the same. Look, Godfather Three. Those were Klansmen. No, those were Catholic priests. They burn the cross. Well, yeah, they burn Christians in the cross in Roman times on a Sunday. Nimrod, the sun. Well, Kalan's men also celebrate Christmas. Well, of course, it's a Catholic holiday. What about all these other ones? Hanukkah, I don't know. Like I say, use some spiritual discernment. Find out the roots and origin. Pray about it. Ask the Holy Ghost to convict you. I'm not going to go out on a tirade and tell you, spoon feed you and tell you about all these holidays. I'm telling you about these two right here. Easter and Christmas. Why? Because they're using my Lord's name in vain. That's why. These enrage me and make my blood boil. You're supposed to hate sin like God hates it. And I'm enraging this. Do you say, when people say Merry Christmas, do you blow off in the... No! Why? Because they're most likely unsaved. I don't say it back to them because that's using his name in vain. I just say Happy Holidays. I'm not, I'm not, not going to be like, I don't this is a no, I don't do that. But I will to a saved person. That's my job. I'm supposed to rebuke you. Now I know why he's unsafe, so but why are you celebrate? Don't you know it's a Saturnalian holiday? Constantine instituted it. Don't you know Constantine uses Catholicism to unite the pagans and the Christians? Politically? It's nothing but a, a political movement. Don't you know the Roman Catholic Church is also a political empire? Don't you know Christmas is it is a religious pale worship holiday, but it's also a political holiday? Don't you know the devil likes to mingle his children in the night with God's children in the day? And does the Bible say do not yoke with unbelievers? Well, when you celebrate a holiday, you are yoking with unbelievers. Just like you yoke with an unbeliever when you go to his Baal church building. Okay? No, I don't rebuke, like, get on unsaved. Because they're unsaved. They're children of the dark. Of course they're going to worship Christmas. But say personally, hey, you know better. Come on. I have no brethren. As far as physical person, I can just go to see, talk to. In that terms, I have no brethren like that. All my brethren is online. Uh, Brian Dedlinger, he has a YouTube. Eric Phelps, Chuck Missler. Those are my family. Above my father, of my, above my biological family. They're my family. I have never met none of them. I will meet them in New Jerusalem, so don't worry about that. But as far as for brethren, I can go fellowship with them. I have none. Why? I won't compromise. Like you will compromise if you worship Christmas. I'm not going to compromise. Well, it's Jesus Christ. Sure it is. It's a Roman God, Jesus. If you worship Jesus, Christmas, go ahead and hang that picture of him. That's the Jesus Christ you're worshiping. With the long hair, with the heart, with the blue eyes. How do you know that? Well, when they worship a Baal Mass when I was in Catholic school, I went to Catholic Mass during times of Christmas, and that's what the picture they had, and they had crosses everywhere. Remember, I was in Catholic school for eight years. Do I have to pull up my diploma and show you I went to St. Peter's school? I won't, because you probably say, oh, that's for someone else. The people of the dark will go see darkness. This is you. And this is some saved people. This is how they view the world. I went to Don Bosco. Catholic school for four years, St. Peter's School. You know what the St. Peter's School, the emblem of St. Peter's School? Well, it's the keys. Of course. Go to Catholic go to St. Peter's School on Bowdoin Street in Boston. Well, you see this keys right there. Well, of course it is. It's a Catholic school. Peter's the first pope. And I believe the, the first pope, well, that's what they say. Of course, Peter's not the first pope. Uh, Jesus Christ has not handed him the keys yet. Okay? But if you are Catholic, you believe Peter Peter is the first pope. Well, what do you think the last pope, the Antichrist's name is going to be called? I believe his name is going to be called uh, Petros Romanus, Peter the Roman. I believe that's going to be his name. He's going to be a handsome young devil. You ever learn? You ever like that term? Well, he's a handsome young devil. Well, you know Jesus Christ is not much to look at. The Bible said he's not a handsome man. The Antichrist will be a handsome man. I think he'll be the youngest pope. He'll be probably around 40, 45 years old. He'll take the name of Peter. Peter the Roman. Many people say he's a... Let's talk about the Antichrist. 
the Antichrist is the final pope of Rome. I don't hear no one saying this. He's not a Jew. The false prophet is a Jew. And he's not a Syrian. He's not a Muslim, which is a Roman ho holiday, Roman religion, which you got Pope John Paul II kissing the Quran. Well, of course he's kissing the Quran because Muslims serve the Catholic Church well. I'm talking about Sunni Muslim. Shia is not of the devil. Sunni is. Sunni Muslim. That's why every country you attack are Shia. Iraq, Shia. Syria, Shia. Iran, Shia. When you attack a country, look at their religious beliefs. It's not political. It's not economic. Who do they believe in? Well, Iran is Shia. Iran believes that their leader is divine. Uh-uh. Can't have that. The only divine leader is the Pope. Kill those Iranians. Well, they're Shia. And Syria, Assad, does not pursue, persecute the Christians. No, we got to kill them. Shia. So, yeah, the, the final pope, I'll end with this. The final pope of Rome, can't make this clear, is the Antichrist. Because every pope is an Antichrist. They call him the self, the vicar of the Christ. They call himself Christ manifested in the flesh. Bagoligo, whatever his name is. First of all, he's not Argentinian. He's Italian. He's a Roman. He may be born in Argentina, but I believe his father was Italian. Well, Italians are descendants of Rome. He is a Roman, and I believe the final Pope of Rome will be a white Gentile. The, the, the Jews will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the age be fulfilled. Or, or until, until what age? Well, until Christ comes at his second coming, until he establishes his millennial kingdom. Until then, the, rule, the world will be ruled by white Gentiles. So don't tell me the, the final Antichrist is a Jew. No, the false prophet is a Jew. The final Antichrist is the Pope of Rome. He will be white. He will be a Roman. Probably German or that, but I'm saying he's Italian. Just like this Pope is Italian. You like you see how they like to disguise Rome? No, he's not Italian. He's Argentinian. Sure, he's Argentinian. He's Spanish. Sure. He speaks Spanish. No, sure he is. He's a Roman. He's Italian. The final Pope of Rome will be Italian. The name will be Peter. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not gonna be dogmatic. Dogmatic means Without a doubt, he's going to be Italian. No, I'm not saying that. But without a doubt, he'll be white. He'll be a Gentile. Without a doubt, he'll be the final Pope of Rome. Why? Because Releva Relevations, Book of Relevations says he will be. The whore sitting on seven hills is Rome. Mystery Babylon is Rome. The whore has many harlots. What is his harlots? What is his bastard children? The harlot are the whore's kids. What are you talking about? Muslim, Mormonism, every religion on the earth is from Rome. You're either two things. You're either a Bible-believing King James Christian or you're a Catholic. But I'm a Mormon, you're a Catholic. But I'm a Muslim, you're a Catholic. But I'm an atheist, you're a Catholic. Athe atheism was started by the Catholic Church. Evolutionism was a product of the Catholic Church. New Age was the product of the Catholic Church. Father Tejardin started New Age. He started evolutionism. Evolutionism was started by a Jesuit priest. Priest. So every religion that you're associated with, if it's not faith-based King James Christianity, well, you're a Catholic. Catholics are universal. I don't know. Who, this was a quote. I think it was Glenn Beck, which is a Jesuit coadjutor. He said, we're all Catholics now. That's what he said, not me. Damn straight. If you're not a King James Bible believing Christian, you are Catholic. But I'm a Mormon. No, you're still a Catholic. But I'm a Muslim. You're still a Catholic. I'm an atheist. You're still a Catholic. I'm a Gnostic. You're still a Catholic. Everything is Catholicism. He who is not with me is against me. You're either Catholic or you're Bible believing Christian. King James. That's me. So I end with this. The final Pope of Rome is the Antichrist. You worship Christians, you're worshiping his return. I come in peace when I speak is meant for war. Let me tell you another scripture. Am I your enemy? Am I therefore your enemy because I tell you the truth? Peace. I do all things through Christ which strengthen me.